courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwells in the house of the Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwells. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sings praise. Our hymn this morning is hymn number 156. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. May we sing without further ado. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, what an amazing Father you are to us. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for your wonderful love, the love that is 
Oh, we cannot describe this love because we do not even comprehend it. So we thank you for this love. Because of your great love for us, you sent your only son, your only begotten son, to give up his life for us. And we thank Jesus Christ for taking up this assignment. And even as we crucify him, we mark him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we are still struggling with that. We still do not know what to do. We still do not know how to treat our brothers and sisters. We still do not know how to treat our own selves. So, Father, we continue to ask you for forgiveness. Forgive us, O Lord, for we have come short of your glory. But, Lord, because of your mercy, you allow us to see another day that we can say thank you and we welcome you into this house. We know you are already here, but you are officially, officially welcome. And we say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, oh Father. Oh, thank you for all that you have done, all that you have yet to do for us. We thank you. May we accept you fully as our Lord and Savior. May we worship you in truth May we be so glad that we have seen another day instead of complaining about what we do not have because we have everything. You have made it possible for us to have everything that we need. But, Lord, sometimes our heart can be so ungrateful. But because you are a great God, you still laugh at us and say, look at those children. If they only knew, if they only knew, that if they come to me with humble hearts and a willing, willing mind, everything is possible to them. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for just being so gracious unto us. We honor you this day and every day. We ask that you come into our worship service from the parking lot to the door, to the security, to the ushers, so the pews, every pew, because we know angels are sitting on all those places that we don't see. But we, we just think about how empty the church is. But it is not because we know the heavenly host is here. So we thank you. We thank you for the choir. And we thank you for every member of this church, those who are on the program today. And we thank you for our pastor, the person who is going to bring a word to us today. We thank you, O oh Lord. We ask your blessing upon her. We ask your strength upon her. We honor you, Father God, and we give you the glory. And may we, may we come together to just say, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. He is in our heart. Hallelujah. He is with us. Hallelujah. He will never leave us. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen.
Amen, amen. The living word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture this morning, the written word, is from Acts 10, 39 through 43. And I'll give everyone a few minutes. Good morning, everyone. we came to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, our scripture this morning is from Acts 10, 39 through 43. We are personally eyewitnesses of everything that he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem in particular. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be plainly seen, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen and designated beforehand by God. That is, to us who ate and drank together with him 
after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, both Jew and Gentile, and to solemnly testify that he is the one who has been appointed and ordained by God to judge the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that through his name, everyone who believes in him, who trusts in him, who relies on him, Uh uh accepting him as Savior and the Messiah, receives forgiveness of sins. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. speak for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we got a we got a we had a report today with the doctor. My husband comes out of the test and says, I didn't pass, I didn't pass, I didn't pass, I didn't pass. I know I didn't. Mm. And I said, all I need is a little bit. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well mm-hmm. <laughs> if we just get a little bit, yeah. A little bit. That's good. Praise God. That's a start. <laughs> we got him to be able to swallow 10 milliliters of clear fluid. So that's there, we a little go. Bit. there we go. There we go. It's a little bit. That's it wasn't right. what we wanted. But it was a little bit. It wasn't what we were looking for. <laughs> it wasn't what we expected. Yes, Lord. But it was a little bit. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise Sometimes God. do not turn away from small beginnings. Yes. Right now. Sometimes you can't see, and the doctor told us, sometimes you can't see what's going on. The only way we can see what's going on is an x-ray. And that's the same thing we were just talking about with Jesus in the tomb. Them centurions didn't know what was going on. They were trying to protect something that was happening on the outside. But they had no clue about the war that was being won and fought on the inside. Jesus. I will take whatever blessing God gives me, yes. wherever it's yes. given, yes, Lord. because it's only the beginning. Little did they know, little yes. did we know mm. the most miraculous thing that happened. Jesus fought hell in the grave and won uh-huh. and got us back to God. Yes. It might have looked like a little bit, <laughs> but I'll take a little bit. Yes, God. And that is the reason why we need to praise God today. Yes. Yes. Some of you may be getting just a little bit. Well. And some of you may be getting a whole lot. But that is still a reason to praise his name today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he's got more for you on the other side. Ooh, thank you, Lord. He's got so much more. Yeah. We don't have to yeah. take the, the thing that sin was given to us for, death and separation. Do you know what it's like to be alone? That could be hell. Being left alone with no one, nothing to talk to you. Darkness. But God loved us so much and did not think it was robbery for giving his only son. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like giving my only son away to nobody. (laughs) But he gave up his only son, and his only son surrendered his life for us so that we can be rectified with our Father. Yes, Lord. So, I don't know about you, but I'm going to pray. Yes. Glory to his name. And you can sit there and say, wrong, off key, don't care. Don't care. If it is inspiring to you to get up off your feet and praise him. Uh-huh. Amen. If you in, you better do it today. Come on now. If not any other day on his earth today, resurrection day. Come on, John. You tell him. Right Before you give 
giving you the glory yes. that is due your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Forever you are the
God is so good. God is so good. He is so good. Somebody said he's mm, good. That's the God we serve. A good God. A great God. An on time God. A healing God, a promise keeping God, a deliverer God, a warrior God, a loving God, a saving God. That's the God that we serve. I don't know about you this morning. I'm trying to keep my glasses on, but I can't. You know, sometimes uh, life throws us loops and throws us all kind of things. And sometimes we get a little shaky in our faith and we get to doubt God a little bit. But then he shows up <laughs> in the least likely of ways, in the least likely of situations. He shows up to let us know without a doubt he hasn't gone anywhere. Church is good to see y'all this morning. So good to see you this morning. It's been a time. But I serve a God. That time, being a time doesn't mean anything to him. We all know that because we're still here. Yes. We all know that because the enemy hasn't let up on anything. He hasn't run us any kind of mercy because that's not his job. The devil has been on his job, but not better than God. We're still here. I tell you what, y'all already know that I got issues coming up with titles for messages. <laughs> Come up with two, three, four, five, six titles. <laughs> and then you think, okay, I got it. So I had two sermons this morning. And I said, oh, okay, I got it. 
So I pulled up this one. I said, okay, it's going to be this one. The other one's over there in the folder. So as I'm sitting there, a conversation I had with God Friday night after the Good Friday service, I said to him, I said, you know what, Lord? Somehow the devil got underneath my skin and created just a little bit of doubt and a little bit of insecurity. Forgive me, God. So I came here with these two messages. And I'm sitting there in the choir singing. Nope, there's another message. And y'all know me. You know I don't do well unless I got some paper in front of me. This new message is not on paper. I don't know what I'm going to say. But what I do know for sure is I know I serve a God who is more than able. What I know for sure is that it's not about me. So pray with me, please. Oh, God. My great God, our great God. Woo, look at you. Look at you looking down the ages and looking at your creation, looking at us and saying, I've got to do something for them. I've got to do something that sets them apart and I've got to do something that that gives them life. I've got to do something, so let me do it. So I stand here, God, today, not me. Because who am I? <laughs> but I stand here today, Lord, trusting in you. Asking you, God, to sit me down <laughs> over in the corner somewhere. <laughs> sit down and mind my business. And you use me, Lord, and open up my mouth and say, your business. Because this is all about you. It's all about you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us. Thank you, God, for everything that you will do for us. Thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace and your salvation. But mainly, God, thank you for your son who rose from the dead, that we might have life. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. But more importantly, you love us. So have your way, Lord, this morning. Have your way. Your will be done. Just let me be an instrument. Let me be a vessel. You speak because we need to hear from you today, Lord. These things we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I will reread the scripture. That's what I'm supposed to do now. We'll see what happens after that. Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 39 through 43, from the Amplified Bible. I, um, I don't usually pick up the Amplified Bible because sometimes the scriptures are like twice as long as it is in the other translations. But in this particular in instance, the Amplified Bible says it just right. This is what it says. We are personally eyewitnesses of everything that he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem in particular. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be plainly seen, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen and designated beforehand by God, that is, to us who ate and drank together with him 
after he rose from the dead, he commanded us to preach to the people, both Jew and Gentile, and to solemnly testify that he is the one who has been appointed and ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that through his name, everyone who believes in him, whoever trusts in and relies on him, accepting him as Savior and Messiah, receives forgiveness of sins. The title of this message that you might get some of, Promise Maker, Promise Keeper, and deliverer. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Friday was Good Friday. And I had an awesome opportunity to preach one of the words over at Camper Friday night. We had a time. We had a time. And I remember when I was young in the ministry. It was, I preached several of the words, and it's like every year I preached the seven words. Didn't ever preach all seven of them, but I would preach seven words. My sister said to me, child, that's your season. (laughs) And I said, I don't know about all that. She said, that's your season. As I'm standing here today and I have that message, what I felt God saying to me is, Review the seven words. That's where we're going to go. The first word that was given, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Isn't that an amazing statement to say? Isn't that an amazing statement to say about folks that are about to hang you on a cross? Folks that have been persecuting you and now have gotten you to the place where they wanted to get you on that cross because they wanted to claim your life. Isn't that a statement? And yet he says, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. They thought they did. (laughs) Had they known, they would have backed up. They would have backed off. They would have went somewhere and sat down somewhere. (laughs) But it's true, they did not know what they were doing. The next one was, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. (laughs) That's why Jesus is Jesus and God is God, because I don't know that I would have been able (laughs) to say that. He'd been talked about and he'd been falsely portrayed as a criminal. Lied on, lied on, lied on, lied on. And called a criminal. And here he is, hanging on a cross between two criminals. One who has the nerve to talk out of the side of his head to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like he knows something. Mm-hmm. But the other one who came to his senses a little bit and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. We know we're supposed to be here. Because mm-hmm. we know what we have done. All right. But this one here, this one here in the middle has no business being here. So he kind of knew a little something, something, but he didn't know because he had everything in the world, all the business in the world to be where he was. So then we have, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. And the preacher who preached that Friday night night said, that's a misunderstood scripture. (laughs) It's not that he... 
if you do the interpretation of the Aramaic in which it was spoken, what it really was supposed to be translated to was, God, I accept this task that you have given me the way you've given it to me. Then we have woman, here is your son, and here is your mother. Here we have Jesus hanging on the cross, hands nailed to the tree, feet nailed to the tree, and here he is still taking care of business for his mother. He's still making provisions for her. I don't know about you, sometimes I get a headache, I don't want to talk to nobody. (laughs) But here he is. Here he is dying on the cross. And it's like, I got one more thing I need to do. I need to see about my mama. Church, y'all have heard me over the last couple weeks complain about having to pastor my family through my sister's death. What nerve I had. Oh, yes, you're right, Reverend Gabe. It's hard. But it couldn't, it wasn't as hard as it was with him on the cross hanging. (laughs) And he said, let me take care of my mama. Let me give us somebody that can see after her Uh when I'm gone. I had to pray and say, Lord, forgive me. Because I was thinking about me. So maybe that's why God said review the last seven words. One reason. Then the fifth word was, I am thirsty. I, I thought about it, and this is the one I preached. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I, I, I kind of knew where I was going with it. But, again, I didn't know where I was going with it. So if you look at it, At face value, I am thirsty. It makes you think about a physical thirst. A physical need, it means you're lacking something. There's something that you need that is not there, and so you're asking somebody to get you what you need. But it's also about a spiritual thirst. Yes. He was thirsty physically because he was both man and God. And in his totality, in being man, he had to feel what we feel as human beings. Uh But you go back and you think about what he had done. And you say, preacher, what did he do? (laughs) What did he do? When I preached this word, I said, Here he is hanging on the cross and he's looking down. And what does he see? Murderers. (laughs) Liars. Tax collectors. Tax evaders. Drunks. Let's keep it real. Women who have been called prostitutes. He saw some of everything at the cross. He saw people that treat other people so ugly and have abused other people. He saw that from the cross. And when I say to you that he was spiritually thirsty, What he was looking at is what he thirsted for. 
He said, Father, give me everything, all their sins. Put them on me. Another word, another way of saying it is, he reached down. He didn't reach down. He reached down. And he snatched every sin that had been committed, every sin that was being committed, and every sin that was yet to be committed, snatched it off of us and placed it on his back. Because he thirsted for our salvation, our redemption, and to be in relationship with us. That's what he did. And you, and in in the scripture that goes with it, you go home look at it. John nineteen, the twenty eighth verse. He didn't dare say I'm thirsty till he finished what he was doing. Mm -hmm. The enormity. I can't begin to comprehend. The enormity of all the sins placed upon him. It would make you thirsty. It'll make you thirsty. Yes, yes, Word number six is it is finished. <laughs> In other words, and let me back up. When he said he was thirsty, you know, sometimes, sometimes folks think he, they're doing you a favor and they're not. The scripture said they had some vinegar. Put it on a hyssop branch and put it to his mouth. Vinegar? And you're thirsty? I don't know what to say. But that's okay. So he moved on past the vinegar. All right. And he said, it is finished. Yeah. In other words, he said, you know what? <laughs> I've gotten all the sin. And I've placed it on my back. Mm. You gave me the vinegar. I took that. So right here and right now, Father, here I come. Because if I don't come, what's going to happen to them? If I don't come, where, where, where are they going to go? Who, are, who will they belong to? if I don't come to you. So I'm almost ready. <laughs> but I think he said it. Not because, not for his benefit, but for the benefit of those that could hear him. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, and forgive me this morning, I believe that's when the curtain tore. <laughs> And when you think about something tearing, you know how you can pick something up and go like this and tear? But that's not how that curtain tore. Nah, 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 nah. It came from the bottom up and tore up. <laughs> it was dark between noon and three. I was complaining this morning because it was dark at six. <laughs> It's supposed to be dark at 6, but it's not supposed to be dark from 12 to 3. But it is that darkness, that sin that permeated the earth, that when the curtain tore, it snatched that sin out the way and sent it where it was supposed to go. And it signified.
signified a new promise, a new covenant, a new beginning for humanity. And God's saying, <laughs> I got you. All right, all right. And the light came back. Pray with me. Then he said the seventh word. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Because this message was not done ahead of time. Some of the facts might be mixed up. Forgive me. And I think, actually, that's when the curtain tore. But go back and read it in Luke, the 23rd chapter, yes. and the 46th verse and thereabout. Yes. Whatever happened was so dramatic that the centurion of the soldier said he must have been the son of God. Yes, Lord. He must have been the son of God. All of that was at the cross. Yes, Lord. And so we know that after that, Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb. Mm -hmm. And the devil thought that he had won. Mm -hmm. He thought he had done something. <laughs> he thought that he had mm -hmm. uh, triumphed over God. What a silly thought. Next day passed. Yeah, we got him. Let's say Friday night passed, we got him. Saturday passed, oh, we got him. Saturday night, yeah, we got him. But early Sunday morning, probably around about 6 o'clock, I would have said that different, but I won't. <laughs> and you already know how I would have said it. That's the God we serve. Amen. That's who we serve. Yes. He got up. Yes. He got up because he said he was going to get up. He got up because God made him to live and die so he could get up. He got up because God is a promise-keeping God and said that he would make a, uh, make a way for the revelation, for the, for the uh, repair of reconciliation of humanity to God. And it had to come. It had to start with humanity and reconciliation with humanity. That's what Jesus did. Yes, yes. Promise keeper. Mm -hmm. But on Sunday morning, he became the deliverer. Yes. Folks, what I want to say to you this morning is sometimes we trivialize our faith. Right, we trivialize our Savior. We get so caught up in nothingness and silliness that we fail to see the cross and what it represented. We forget, till Easter, that a life was given that we might have life 
and a pathway to eternal communion with God. Pastor, what are you talking about? Glad you asked. I'm going to give you an example of trivializing nothingness and silliness. I'm going to tell a short story. It's entitled, You Took My Parking Space at Church. <laughs> One day, a man went to visit a church. He got there early and parked his car and got out. Another car pulled up near the driver, and the driver of that car got out and said, I always park here. Jesus. You took my place. Yeah. The visitor went inside for Sunday school and found an empty seat and sat down. And a young lady from the church approached him and stated, that's my seat. You took my place. The visitor was somewhat distressed by this rude welcome but said nothing. After Sunday school, the visitor went into the sanctuary and sat down. And another member walked up to him and said, that's where I always sit. You took my place. The visitor was even more troubled by this treatment, but still said nothing. Later on, as the congregation was praying for Christ to dwell among them, the visitor stood up, and his appearance began to change. Horrible scars became visible on his hands and on his sandals' feet. Someone from the congregation noticed him and called out, What happened to you? And the visitor replied, as his hat became a crown of thorns, well, well, well. and a tear fell from his eye, oh, and he said, I took your place. Yeah. 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 We get caught up in ourselves so much that we do not even recognize Christ yeah. in others. But he called us to be uncomfortable and to go to uncomfortable places because Jesus did. They say the crucifixion. Crucifixion is one of the most horrible deaths that anybody could endure. Yet he went to the cross. And because he went to that uncomfortable place, and we keep calling ourselves Christians, which means we are to be Christ imitators, aren't we supposed to do the same thing? Well, the scripture says that what Christ, that's what Christ called the disciples to do. Aren't we disciples of Christ? And even in places where we go to experience and meet Christ, mm -hmm. namely at church, <laughs> we don't even recognize him when he shows up. Come on. Come on, Come on, Pastor. What are we looking for, people? We should see Christ in everybody that we encounter because Jesus is in all of us. The task is for us as Christ followers to meet other people where they are at. That's what Jesus did. Why don't we do the same thing? People say, well, we're set apart. You're set apart spiritually. But we're supposed to be among everybody Amen. if we are Christ's followers. Amen. So the question today is, when are we going to move from being followers to seekers 
and then to be finders. Finding the lost who need Christ. We are the face of Christ to everyone who encounters us. When are we going to live into it? Maybe I'm, I'm talking about me, because certainly that's not you. When are we going to live into it? The cross was the greatest tool that ever existed. The cross took that first covenant, shifted it, kept the original recipients, the Hebrews, added the remaining people, us, and incorporated the original agreement with some enhancements. Promise maker God planned to restore humankind to humankind and humankind to God through the Messiah. That's what he said. Promise keeper Jesus fulfills the role of Messiah and provides the vehicle to restoration of humankind, to humankind and humankind to God with the sacrifice of his life. But deliverer Jesus brings the gift of salvation, making God accessible to all humankind by his death on the cross, which is the completion of the task of restoration. In other words, Jesus delivers the complete package. And Resurrection Sunday, we know he didn't stop there. Because <laughs> he got up. He got up. He got up. He got up so that we could get up every day. So that we could go out in the world to be his hands and feet. That we can take our raggedy lives, put some value to it as the living testimony of the goodness of what God has done for us. He got up. He got up. Because he got up, we can get up. And we can walk and we can talk and we can tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. And sometimes when we tell ourselves we don't deserve it, we're absolutely right. <laughs> but it ain't about us. It's about him. He said, I know you don't, but I'm giving it to you anyway. He got up so we could get up so we could tell somebody about him. Promise maker, promise keeper, deliverer. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. God is good. And he's always on time. Would you please stand for the invitation to discipleship? There may be someone here today who needs somebody to pray with you. And if that's the case, feel free to come down to the altar. There are people here who will pray with you. And sometimes we get to thinking, oh, I, 
I don't want to say out loud. He already knows what you're going to say. All right now. Because he already knows what we've done. But it's not about that. It's about you making a conscious decision that something's got to change. So if there's someone here today and you want somebody to pray with you, come down. We'll pray with you. Yes. No judgment. Yes. We've been in the same situation. There might be someone here today that you've been floating around, you haven't quite made the decision to make a commitment to a particular church home, and some people say, well, you don't have to. I'm not saying that you have to. But what I'm saying is when you align yourself and when you land somewhere, you're building a foundation. A foundation to be around like-minded people. A foundation to be with people who will walk alongside you in life and death situations. Yes, Lord. And they can do that because they've been there and they've done that. And God has blessed them and they will do the same thing for you. But this whole time we've been talking about this man named Jesus. Who is this Jesus? The Messiah, the Son of God. And if there's someone here today that you don't know who he is, but you want to know who he is, come on down. We can help you do that too. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed, but be free in Jesus. Won't you come? Won't you come? Not for who you could be, but for who you are. Won't you come? And sometimes somebody told me, I want to join church, but I didn't know when I could join church. When we say come down and fellowship, it's the same thing as saying you can come and join church. Just for clarification. I don't want anybody to miss that opportunity if this is you. Come on down. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You may be seated. to just play some soft music. Even though we have sat down, if there's somebody who you almost got up and you almost walked up, you can still walk up. You can still get up and walk up. It's not too late. And if you don't want to walk up here by yourself, you can raise your hand and one of us will walk up here with you. Is there one here today? Is
Is there one here today? It's not too late. It's never too late for him. It's never too late. church <laughs> Whew, this morning <laughs> we have the two newest members of St. James Amy yeah. Church Day 
Deja Alexander, C.J. Jones. Amen. Give him a round of applause. Can I tell a little bit of your business? <laughs> okay. I won't tell all of it. I'll just tell a little bit. They moved here in December from Texas. You got to have courage to move to Minnesota in December <laughs> from Texas. And I prepped them for the winter. <laughs> but look at God. <laughs> I had a conversation with tell a little of your business. <laughs> one of them, I won't say which one, said, I'm on a spiritual journey. I, I'm trying to figure some things out. Well, uh -huh. And the other one said, I've got church hurt, so I don't know if I want to come to church. Well. I prayed. And evidently they were praying. And they started coming. But St. James, when they got here, what you all did was you loved them, you loved them, you loved them, you loved them. And what they saw and experienced with you is why they're standing up here today. Praise the Lord. And what I want you to know, they didn't come up here half-stepping. They've come up here joining organizations. Amen. Joining the lay organization. As officers in the lay organization. And this is the group everybody is saying, oh, you can't get them to come to church. Oh, but you can. <laughs> so what I'm going to do right now I'm welcoming you to St. James Amy Church in St. Paul, Minnesota, our newest members. Thank you. So we got Sister Yolanda. You already know Sister Joya. You know Sister Thomas. You know Sister Winnie. But what I want them to do is I want them to turn and face the congregation, but I want you to line up and come and welcome them in St. James. Will you do that? Would you do that, please? Turn around. Hallelujah and amen. It's what I do. Praise is what I do.
can you bear with me for one more moment? Shay, Elijah, come here. Watch your foot when you get up. St. James, this is your first family, amen? amen. Don't ever think that you're doing anything in vain. This and other occasions when other people have joined church let you know that you're not doing things in vain. That what you're doing is being observed and felt and is life changing. And that's exactly what we're supposed to do, amen? So don't trivialize what you do. Yes. Know that God is at work through you. And he'll show you the fruits of your labor. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Turn it over to Sister. So I listened to this devotion in the morning, and she told this story. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I'm going to give you a little bit. So Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden, and God said that he wanted them to take care of the garden, all the trees and everything. All of this is yours except one. That one tree they were not to eat, but they were to finish the garden. So think about the money that God gives you. You have, whether it's a retirement check like mine, it can be your employment check, it can be a government check. God allows you to have that. That's yours. But there's a portion of it that he said, that's mine. That's the part that you was just the end of. And you need to give that back to God. And the last thing she said, it's dangerous when you mess with what belongs to God. And that's the portion that he asked for. Now, Father, we come before you because, Lord, we don't want to live in danger of nothing. All right. And, Father God, if you have blessed us with stuff right now, I don't care if it's $5 a week. Lord, all you ask for is 50 cents. So, Father, That you can give by giving. You can give by giving. We still take checks. And I hope that it's on the board to mail your checks. You can drop your checks out. Or we take cash. Remember, it's not about the church. This is about you. What God trusts you with. And then he asks. up 
in this church because we're starting to get all kinds of new stuff. Not just we got some bright ideas coming. They can't hear me. I know y'all can hear me. You know what? There was a reason for keeping the doors of the church open. We have a newer, newer member of St. James Amy Church. Somebody that some of you know. Sister Bernadette Johnson, the wife of Reggie Johnson. don't know it, Brother Reggie Johnson was a choir member here at St. James and a member of the Sons of Levi. All right. And we lost Brother Reggie a few years ago. I don't, can't remember when. But she had been on my mind just the other day, wondering how she was doing. And look at God. Look at God. She's also asking for prayer. Because she's facing kidney disease. So what I want us to do is just take this moment and pray for her. Amen. Oh, Lord. Lord, we 
bring before you Sister Bernadia Johnson. Because you're the only place where we want to come to Woo, for healing. We're not knocking doctors. We're not knocking medicine. What we are saying, though, is that you are the ultimate doctor with the medicine that we need. Oh, God, we ask you to please reach down and touch Sister Bernadette with your healing hands, God. And as she is responsible and seeking medical care for her condition, Lord, you be the doctor. You be the pharmacist. You be whatever she needs, God, in this moment and in this time for her healing. God, we thank you. We thank you so very much. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ask you, God, to wrap her up in your arms. Hold her to your bosom, God. Bring her comfort. And in the midst of the trials and the tribulations, Lord, let her find peace and joy. As she encounters you, as you work out her situation. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for modern technology because it is because of technology we can accept her in today as the newest member of St. James Amy Church. Amen. Sister Bernadette, thank you. We love you. I have your information and I will give you a call. I want us to come and see you. I want to lay eyes on you. Not that I can do anything, but Hopefully that I can bring Christ in me. That he can use me and whoever else comes with me to bring some peace and joy to you and comfort. God, we thank you and praise you. We ask you to touch her children, Lord. Her entire family, Lord. Bless them and keep them and cause your face to shine upon them. Give them peace. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. And amen. amen. What an Easter. Yeah. What an Easter. All righty. So we're at announcements, and Sister Leatris is going to read the announcements, and Sister Winnie has one to add when you're done. Okay. Amen. My, my, my. What an Easter. Praise God for all that he is doing and will do. The announcements for this Sunday... Sunday school for the youth, four years to 14 years old, is in the undercroft. So every morning for those that come and have children from four to 14, they can experience Sunday school in the fellowship hall. The adults, young adults, the high school classes are held on Zoom every Thursday at 630 We have Sunday school books. Uh, they have been distributed. If you need a book, or have any questions, you can contact Teresa Cooper, who is here. Okay, Bible study is on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. 
and will resume on April 3rd. So our, it is on Zoom. The new book <coughs> entitled Church Forsaken, Practicing Presence in Neglected Neighborhoods is by John Brooks. The books are here and we're asking for a $5 donation. You can see the pastor after service for these books. And there are unlimited books at this time, but we will be receiving more for those that want one. The St. Paul, uh, Paul Minneapolis District Conference will be held here at St. James. We are hosting April 17th through the 19th. More information is forthcoming. And note, <coughs> please note the change in the date, April 17th through the 19th. There also will be a church conference following the church service. So our members, please, please stay. I'm sorry, excuse me. Next Sunday, April 14th. So again, it's next Sunday, April 14th. Next Sunday. I'm sorry, it's not next Sunday, but April 14th. Okay, excuse me. <laughs> April 14th. right <laughs> okay apologize okay and that's it won't be long that that conference won't be long so again mark your calendars for april 14th and well i just thought about it i want to tell you well this is missionary saying that's why you see the missionaries that was in charge of the service. Yes. Now, the other thing that I came to let you know is there is kids downstairs for our children. Hold off, young uh, adults, and let all of the children get some candy first, and then you grab a bag. Uh, the other thing is if you did not get a palm, um, palm Sunday, I believe they have extra downstairs that you are welcome to have. All right, thank you. I need to sneeze, so, oh, you know, we see if we can get through this without it happening. St. James, I wanna say thank you so very much for all your prayers, all your cards, and even the gifts that some of you gave, my goodness, the Lord is so very good. As I went out to memorialize my sister, we had a time. About 250 people, about 150, 175 of them were my family members who came from Florida and Georgia and Maryland and D.C. and Oklahoma, Louisiana, Portland, Oregon is where we were, Los Angeles, California, Washington State, and Arizona. We had a time. And if you had been here any of the past several Sundays and I was whining and complaining that um, I had to pastor them through, and there's nothing wrong with pastoring, but sometimes you just want to sit down as a pastor, and you want to be a sister, and that's what I wanted to be. But let me tell you about the need to be obedient. So here we are at the service, and my sister said that she wanted a celebration of life. She told us, don't walk up in here wearing no black, Come in here in some bright colors because I've led a good life. The Lord has been good to me. So we did the memorial before the transition into the celebration of life service. So we did that. And the other thing is she wore hats. And they said, wear a hat. I don't have a hat. Well, the kind of hat I have, you don't want me to bring. So Sister Winnie... Yeah. Let me borrow one of her hats. I might get me a hat or two. And so as we were doing the transition from memorial service, somebody said, how are you going to transition? I said, I'm going to show you how. 
and I reached down, and today rich is my word, I don't know why. Pulled out this bag and put my hat on, put it on, tilted it forward, because that's what she would have done. Now let's go celebrate her life. But that's not the real reason I was supposed to do that eulogy that I did not want to do. I'm standing out there in the vestibule, the service is over, they're celebrating life, and she was an earring aficionado. She has more earrings than I have, and that's a lot of earrings. And they took them and put them on trees and sat them on the table and told people, come and get whatever earrings you want. So I'm standing out there and all the earrings about gone. I got one pair. But this woman walked up to me. She said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, yes, ma'am. How can I help you? She said, I got a problem. I said, tell me what your problem is. I've been talking to folks because God has been talking to me. Yeah. And what I tell people what God has been saying to me, they tell me I can't do that. Mm. That I can't be a preacher and be called by God because I am a woman. She said, and here I walk, in here today, and here you are standing up here giving the eulogy. And I had asked God for confirmation. And you're my confirmation. Trust God. Be obedient. And she's not even a family member. She knows people who knew my sister. And she lives in Austin, Texas. And she flew up from Austin, Texas to be there. Be obedient. Trust God. Step out of your comfort zone. Be available for God to use you. She told me her name. I didn't have pen and paper. I didn't know what to do. I said, but you know so-and-so and so? She said, yeah, I know so-and-so, so-and-so. I said, so-and-so, so-and-so know how to get a hold of me. On my way to the airport, I get to the airport, and I pick up my phone. And there's a text message for her. I didn't give her my number. <laughs> and there's a text message from her, and she says, Pastor, this is me. The lady who talked to you after the service, I just want you to know I appreciate what you said to me. And I'm going to seek God further and ask him, what would you have me to do? Trust God. Be obedient. And know that the person that you are is exactly who God needs you to be. For somebody else. Amen? Amen. Quit running away from yourself. Turn your face to God. And trust that you are exactly what he needs you to be. Will I complain again? Probably, but not, not right now. Not right now. Amen. So what we'll do instead of our traditional uh, benediction, we will do the missionary benediction since today is missionary day. Praise God. May we all stand all over the church. And normally we form a circle, but we won't today. I know we're still, um, people are sick and other things, so we're going to be cautious, but... Um, we will. You guys going to sing it? Mm -hmm. And I believe the words are on the screen there as well. Okay. <laughs>
May the spirit of Christian mission enter every heart. also downstairs, so we invite you downstairs to fellowship with us. Amen. May you go in peace.